Hi, and welcome everybody. This is Colin Hung, Chief Marketing Officer and Editor at Healthcare IT Today. I'm sitting down with Tim Costatino, Vice President and Head of Product at Advanced MD. Tim, welcome to the program. Thank you, Colin. Glad to be here. Yes, and uh, yes, uh, we you know one of the fun things about doing these interviews is that we get to see everyone's background. I, of course, have hidden mine, but uh, it's nice <laughs> to see what people use as their home offices. You have a very nice one. Uh, oh, thank you very much. If you uh, if I were to shift the camera ten feet over this way, uh, you would see trains galore and uh, my son's uh, uh, schooling from home desk. And uh, yes, it's uh, it's quite quite the adventure over on this side of the room. <laughs> We all now are living in multi-use space. We live in our office, we work in the kitchen, the school, the playground, it's all mixed together now. <laughs> <laughs> that is very well, true. <laughs> thank you for sitting down with me. Um, so, you know, wanted to ask you a question right off the bat, uh, yeah. just from around trends. Um, so what are the trends that you've seen emerge from this COVID-19 pandemic that you think will actually continue to drive improvements over the next few years? Yeah, it's a it's a really good good question, Colin. I think um, ultimately what I what I feel like COVID nineteen is doing is really an acceleration of a lot of the existing trends that were already in place. Um, the, the 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 trends were already there for practices to move towards telemedicine. Um, there were lots of practices that had purchased telemedicine but just never got over the the logistical hump of actually implementing telemedicine for the practices. Um, uh, and with COVID-19, it just accelerated those, those trends tenfold. Um, it made it critical for the survival of the practices um, to move to telemedicine. It made it critical to take care of the patients to move to telemedicine. And that really has uh, pushed that trend um, uh, over, the, over the threshold. And now it's becoming a day-to-day -day reality, right? Um, now the practices have figured it out. They, kn they know how to do telemedicine. Um, patients have figured it out. They know how to do telemedicine. Um, from a regulatory perspective, a lot of the hurdles that used to be there for, for telemedicine um, have have gone away, and I know um, a lot of those a lot of those um, changes have been given the temporary tag, um, and some of them surely will be temporary, but I think a lot of them are going to be longer lived trends as well. Um, so I think what's going to happen once we get over this sort of acute period of COVID nineteen. Um, uh, these trends are just going to continue moving forward, but they're going to continue moving forward at a much faster clip because it is going to become the new norm um, once all of this is done. Um, and I think, you know, that's going to be, um, you know, that's going to be a big advantage, I think, to, to patients long term, um, because it's really going to help just move everybody forward in terms of a patient centered um, uh, experience as a, as a interface with their, with their providers. Yeah, I think you're definitely right about the whole telemedicine thing. It's 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 uh, this whole pandemic has really uh, caused people to relook at that technology and adopt it in ways that didn't weren't happening in the weeks before. Yeah. Um, I think some have said that we've probably seen more um, more telehealth being used in the last uh, few days than we have over in the last few months. Yeah, I mean that's absolutely true, and that's what we're seeing in Advanced MD as well. Um, uh, we released a new sort of at-home uh, product suite um, that includes, you know, all of the tools that you need in order to have a patient-centered practice, but then also all the education and resources that the practices need and the patients need to be successful. Um, and just over the last last month, we've seen our app downloads uh, for telemedicine increase by over 2,000%. I mean, that is an in, in incredible um, immediate growth rate that's 100% that's a result of COVID-19. So, Tim, uh, this pandemic has turned a lot of the world upside down. You know, things that were normal or uh, now or were not normal before, we're all wearing masks, we're all doing strange things, keeping six feet away from everybody. But you and I were talking before we started that there are some things that you believe are just going to remain uh, relevant. They were relevant before, they're relevant now, and they're going to be important and relevant in the future. Uh, maybe you can expand on what you told me there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so really, I think, you know, regardless of COVID-19, um, there are some fundamental truths, right? And these are extremely obvious, but people are still people. Physics is still physics, right? Um, and what that means is, is that, you know, people don't like pain. Friction causes pain and friction is everywhere. Um, and that's going to remain true 
at all times, right? Um, and so really what COVID-19 did is it really just focused the lens on a very specific area of practice and a very specific way of, of interfacing with, um, with your providers, right? Um, but those fundamental truths are gonna remain true today, they're gonna remain true tomorrow. It's just really a question of sort of where your focal point is as you look at those fundamental truths. Um, so in the, in the new world today and just continuing forward, it's gonna be how do we identify that pain? Right? How do we identify the pain that, that the practice is experiencing, that the providers are experiencing, that the patients are experiencing? Um, and then how do we identify the solutions to remove that friction? Right? Um, and it really, it, it's, gonna, it, it's gonna happen in, in, in those three steps in that order. It's understanding the pain, understanding the friction, and then trying to figure out what the solution is to, to, to resolve that. Um, and that's ultimately what's what's happening today and that's what's going to happen going forward um and that practice and that process is going to remain true really across time definitely listening to your customers is always a good thing and then understanding what they're really asking you and then of course working to solve that those are fundamental business uh, uh practices that are timeless i think you're absolutely right what are, what are you doing kind of in this world to continue that because it must be kind of hard to to get user input and, and uh, feedback at this moment. Um, but what are you guys doing to try and continue that, uh, that practice in this world? Yeah. So I think from um, the, the, one of the things that we have within our, within our product team is that um, uh, it's always empathy first, right? Um, and so kind of step one for us to realize is that we need to have empathy first with our own people, right? Um, because we are all experiencing this, right? I mean. We're doing this interview from my basement and there's a really good chance that my kids and my dog are all gonna come in here and participate in this interview, right? So um, fortunately, it's really easy for us to have empathy for that because we're all dealing with that at the moment, right? Um, but uh, I think fundamentally it starts with having empathy for your team and realizing that everybody on your team is going through challenges and they're going through their own experiences and you need to be there for them to help them be successful. Because if you want to try to help somebody else, first you got to help yourself. You got to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and taking care of your family and the people that are around you. Um, so I think that's kind of step one for us. Um, step two, um, again with empathy first, is having empathy with the customers, the partners, the patients, um, and really meeting them where they are, right? Um, and so um, uh, just as some really just just easy examples, when um, uh, when the reality of this first hit, right? We sort of all started working from home overnight. Um, we had to be empathetic that this was a huge, massive impact for our for our providers and our clinicians. So, you know, we had some scheduled meetings to try to get feedback. And we said, you know what? Now's not the right time. You need some time to, to, to figure some things out. We're going to take a pause on this for a little while. Um, and in the meantime, we're going to start working on what we can do to help you out right now in this moment, right? Um, but what's so great is that now we're a little bit, we're, we're kind of past that sort of acute period. We're all starting to get more comfortable and um, working from our home situations and kind of understanding what the current reality is. Um, now it's about just being open and empathetic in terms of how we meet with our patients, right? Or how, how we meet with our, with our customers. Um, so we're doing a lot of virtual meetings like we are right here. <laughs> We're doing lots of surveys. We're doing lots of, of just outreach efforts and just honestly asking our customers, what do you need right now, right? What you needed two months from now is different than what you needed, what you thought you needed two, two months ago, right? What's changed, right? Help us understand that so that we can help make sure that we're prepared and ready for you going forward. Um, and, uh, and I think that's really been sort of the, the, the key way that we've helped to stay engaged, taking care of our people, taking care of our customers and just being really open um, to their feedback, really listening and trusting them, and then making sure that we have the resources um, uh, and the push to make sure that we can react extremely fast right now in the current situation, but then also making sure that we're prepped to react for the new normal um, that, that that's ahead of us. It's, it's actually really encouraging that you are being proactive and getting that feedback from your customers and your clients, uh, only because I think you're right. I mean, they're so, rightfully so, they've got their minds on other things. They're, they're focusing on patient care. They're focusing on addressing some of their short-term needs. And so being proactive and soliciting their feedback, which I'm sure they've got lots of, 
uh, yeah. is, is the way to, to continue to make sure that what you're delivering isn't going to miss the mark. So kudos to you yeah. guys. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really helpful. And, you know, one of the advantages that we have is that um, mm -hmm. we have such a wide pool of resources that we can get feedback from. And that enables us to help all of our customers, right? Mm -hmm. So as we hear from one customer over here, here's a challenge, and another customer over here that there's a challenge, you know, we pull that together and we can do education, we can do social media, um, communications and education. Um, we can make product changes that, that, um, that, uh, that, that help one customer here, but ultimately helps, you know, lift all boats at the same time. Um, right. And that's an advantage that we have by being sort of in healthcare technology and having as many clients as we do. So we're trying to really leverage up on that and really help our clients be successful going forward. Can you, uh, are, is your team doing anything differently to respond more rapidly to these requests and these changes um, in terms of actually developing and getting them tested and then out into the production world? Have you guys done anything different in, in that sense? Yeah, most definitely. Um, so when all this happened, we knew right away how big of a deal this was going to be. I mean, I guess it, it, was, it, was, it, was, a, it was a growing feeling that everybody in the whole country had, right? And then all of a sudden it became very apparent <laughs> how big of a deal it was, right? right. Um, uh, so we made, some, uh, we made some, some big changes just internally to make sure um, that we could support the new need going forward. Um, uh, we added additional product resources um, to our patient-focused product line. Um, we more than doubled our engineering team that was focused in that area. Um, we we have cross-departmental meetings um, for uh, all the departments within Advanced MD. We're meeting daily um, to review what can we do to help our clients from a communication and education and training. What can we do to help them help their patients from a communication education training? Um, but then also, what can we do from a product perspective to help them be successful going forward? Um, so we aligned all of our resources, and we also said, look, all of the normal expectations that you might have in terms of what it would take to release, in terms of normal schedule and nor normal cadence of schedule, we said, forget that, right? We're going to release as soon as we're comfortable that testing has passed and that we have high quality. We're not going to wait for anything else. We're going to release. We're going to communicate. Um, we're going to make sure that we can respond uh, right away. And we've we've been doing releases just about um, at, at a minimum of every week um, since this has happened to help make sure that we can take care of customers as quickly as possible. You shared with me a, a mantra that I thought was fantastic uh, in a way to sort of keep us all focused on the right things. Uh, do you mind sharing what that that mantra was? Yeah, it's 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 very simple, but it's it's make it easy make it flexible, make it fast, and connect on their terms. So connect on the patient's or the user's terms. Meet them where they are. Um, and if you make it easy, make it flexible, make it fast, um, then you're going to make their lives a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. I love that yeah. mantra. It's so simple. But, but obviously pretty hard to follow uh, when you've got 20,000 different you know, inputs and things that are happening at the moment, but, but making, you know, making sure you, you meet, where, meet where your users are is so critically important. Back to that fundamental thing you and I talked about at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. And you know, again, that's, you know, that, that's, that's always a constant. And for me, it, it, and I mentioned this before, but it's just about where you're focusing in on, right? Like where is that lens pointing? And right now our lens is pointing in this one very specific area because it's acute and it's big and it's huge and it's important. But the 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 um, the great thing about it is that that area is going to continue to be important and continue to be critical um, for our healthcare industry going forward. So this is just helping to accelerate it really just a, across the board, which um, you know, I don't, I don't want to minimize the pains at all that's going on right now. And um, those are real and those are, those are acute and those are, and those are true. Um, uh, this will help us be better going forward as well, right? The, the steps that we're taking now, the steps that everyone's taking to prepare will help us get stronger for the, um, for, for the future. Um, uh, because this is, you know, this is, this is huge, but it's not going to be going away anytime, anytime soon. Um, and ultimately, so help move the healthcare industry forward. What are some of the things that we can expect to see from Advanced MD in the weeks and months ahead? Yeah, so I think it'll be um, it's going to be a uh, a continuation of some of the efforts that we already have in place to really help focus in on on the patient-centered healthcare experience. Um, mm. 
So it'll be continue to enhance our, our at-home product lines. We'll be continuing to offer helpful, meaningful resources and education for our, um, for our clients. Um, and uh, it, it'll be also, it'll be kind of um, an extension of the horizon, right? Like right now our horizon, our focal point is very much acute. It's right now, but it's gonna be an extension of the horizon of what does this look like in six to 12 months, right? Like what do we need to do to really make this um, a seamless, frictionless experience for everybody across the board. Um, and so we have a lot of effort around that today to help plan for our, our future releases and what's going to happen towards the end of this year and next year. Um, and that 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 requires a lot of a lot of focused attention, right? And a lot of creative um, attention on how do you solve for some of these challenges. Um, right. Because depending on your horizon, if you're looking at a short horizon, you can make quick fixes to remove some of the easy friction, right? But if you have a longer horizon, that gives you the ability to start looking to look at creative solutions or innovative solutions. Um, things like um, how can machine learning and artificial intelligence help improve the scheduling process um, for uh, for our patients, right? How do we make it easier for them to find the right time with the right with the right clinician um, who has the right specialty that takes the right um, insurance, right? Um, uh, how do we make all of those decisions easy? quick, fast, frictionless um, for the patient, which ultimately makes the, the practices lives so much easier and so much better going forward as well. Um, and we're also looking at, you know, technologies that are even, that are even further out. I mean, uh, 5G as a technology is something that will really help um, with just uh, connections across the board for, um, for, uh, for, for our patients in, uh, in the new sort of patient-focused world. Um, uh, I mean, just, you know, a, a quick example for us, you know, we had some, some connectivity issues, you know, trying to just get this webinar going, right? Um, uh, that's going to get better, right? That's, that friction point um, exists today for, for telemedicine, patient-focused and at-home care. Well, that's going to start to go away even more. So how can we leverage that more and how can we take advantage of that, of that improvement going forward with new products, new technologies, um, new ways of interfacing with, with your physician. Um, so we're really excited about all of those things. And we've got, um, we've got folks that are looking at the, 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 the today stuff, and we've got folks that are looking at the tomorrow stuff. And I'm excited to kind of see all that, you know, become a reality in the next, uh, you know, next few months to years. What's the one thing, Tim, that you hope our viewers will take away from our conversation today? The one thing I would say, um, at home care is critical, important, and valuable. Um, I think uh, broadly that was that was seen, um, and uh, it's critical today. And I think it's going to remain an increasingly important part of um, of of, uh, of healthcare going forward. And Tim, if if anyone wants to find out more about what you've talked about today, find out more about Advanced MD, where can they go? Yeah, so I would say the um, uh, the the best place would be advancedmd.com. Um, we are also uh, present on all of the social media channels that 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 are out there as well. Great, Tim. Thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate all of the information you shared. Uh, I think you've given a lot, us a lot to chew on. Again, I love that mantra uh, and some of the things that you guys are doing to meet the patients and your clients where they are. So thank you very much for being on today's program. Yeah, no problem. Thanks a lot, Colin. I appreciate it. This is Colin Hung from Healthcare IT Today, signing off.